from madeeveryday.com. And today's project is a request from you. You are always asking me to share clothing that you can sew for yourself. So we are going to make this stretchy tank top out of strawberry fabric. Sewing for yourself is pretty fun because you can customize it to fit you. Oftentimes you do need a pattern to go with it and we'll talk about that in a second. But I love that this tank top comes together really quickly. I have sewn a bunch of them. These are out of fabric designs that I have created. This is a sleeveless one, this daisy print. And then I'm very partial to cats. On this one I added some little ruffly edges. And today we're sewing this strawberry one. So here's what you need. About a yard of knit fabric and a pattern. Now let's talk about your pattern. I actually don't have a pattern to share with you because I want you to create your own pattern and learn some of those little tricks. You wanna start with something that you have in your closet. I have this tank top that I have worn many times and I've loved and I thought this would be really fun to, you know, make more of. So grab if you have a tank top or a sleeveless shirt or even a t-shirt you can omit the sleeves on. And we're gonna start by turning it inside out because we wanna be able to see all of those seams that already exist. And I'm gonna fold it in half because we're going to trace it so that you cut on the fold so that when it opens up, you have one big piece, right? Okay, and my kind of go-to method when I'm in this pattern making process, I like to tape together standard pieces of paper just like that. I trace things, I make markings, I have some other versions right here that I've done. I often mark down which version this was, the date I did it, the seam allowance, which fabric I used, maybe things that I changed from one version to the next. So you just wanna keep organized so that if you revisit this pattern, you know, a few months later, you have everything. So you can remember all the different things that you did, which never fail. There was something I forgot to put in and I have to make more versions, but that's okay. It's all a learning process. So I have my sleeveless tank top here and I'm grabbing a pencil and what I'm gonna do is just start kind of tracing around it. So because these sleeves are bound, we're gonna make a little kind of like bias tape to go around it. I'm not going to, I can just trace right around that, right there, like that. And then when I get to the end, the side seams here, I'm gonna include the seam allowance that's already on here. Sometimes when people make patterns, you can just trace and then you can add the seam allowance, but I am tracing the seam allowance itself. So I'm just gonna trace like that. And then around the top here, same thing. And this is not super precise. Again, I'm kind of just using this as a building block. Then I can make adjustments. Do I want to add more to my side here? Do I want to make it longer, shorter? You know, like with the little cat tank top, I added a ruffled sleeve to it. So this is kind of, like I said, a building block. Okay, there's the back. I traced around that. Then when I want to do the front, I'm going to tuck this under and I'm going to trace down what my front should look like. Okay, like that, where am I left off? Oh, my hem. Okay, I do wanna add some extra on the hem here. So, and I would probably be using a ruler for all this, but if I want my hem, if I want a chunky hem or kind of a small hem, just decide on that and then figure out, okay, I need a half inch for that and then maybe another inch or two for that. And mark that down there. Okay, there you go. And you've got a pretty basic, pattern piece, which looks like most t-shirt patterns. Then what I like to do is I have already traced this onto cardstock and my pattern pieces are ready to go. So let's cut out our fabric. I've got my fabric here and I have it folded so I can cut my pieces on the fold. And I like to do it like this where it's folded in this way so that it kind of saves me on that fabric in the middle. So place these right here on the fold. And here's my front piece. And then I am going to trace around or cut around. If you are comfortable with your rotary cutter and a mat underneath, you could just cut it out that way. I feel like I'm always, you know, cutting the pattern itself when I try to do that. So I just need to keep practicing. I'm sure I've told you that before. Maybe I should have you hold me to it. So instead I am just tracing with my pen here and I'm trying not to tug too hard because this is a knit fabric. It's kind of, you know, stretchy a little bit. Well, it's stretchy a lot, but I don't want it to stretch as I'm tracing. So I'm just going like that. And then I am going to cut it out 
with my scissors. So, just like that. And then we'll do the same thing with the other piece. Okay, we've got our back and our front pieces. I'm gonna set this aside. And then one other thing that we want to cut is the binding that's gonna go around our sleeves and around the neck. So I have a little more fabric here. I have it folded the width of the fabric, which just means the selvage to selvage. And I've got my rotary cutter, I've got my mat, I've got my ruler, and I'm gonna cut two strips, the width of the fabric, that are one and three quarters inches wide. Okay, well, let's make sure I'm not off at all. Okay, that looks good. And let's do one more. Okay, got our binding. We've got our top pieces. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take them with right sides together. And we're gonna start by sewing the two shoulder seams. So, you're gonna be amazed at how quickly this comes together. Let me grab my pins, here they are. I am going to pin them just to make sure nothing's shifting as I'm going. So, just do one right there, and then one on the other side. Now, as we go to our sewing machine, if you've never sewn with knits before, they're always just a little bit of an adventure and that is what makes them so fun. They're so comfortable and cozy to wear. We wear them as t-shirts. I have a full video that walks through everything you need to know about sewing with knit fabrics. So if you have never sewn with knits, I highly recommend checking out that video. You can even make a cute little headband. What's important when you're sewing with these is that you use a stitch that will stretch with your fabric. If you sew a normal straight stitch, it will just break right as we put it on. So when we go to our machine, we're gonna use a zigzag stitch, which kind of gives a little more stretch as it pulls with the fabric. So let's go to our machine. Before we sew that shoulder seam, let's prep one more step. Grab those little strips that we cut. This is for the binding that's going to go around your arm and around the neck. And we want to press these edges over like this so that we can create this little binding like that. And if you find as you're making your tank top, if that's a little too wide, you could cut these strips even thinner. It's just your personal preference. So mine are one and three quarters inch. You can do what you would like as well. Now I'm gonna use my handy little bias tape maker, which you don't need to have this. If you don't have one, no big deal. We're just gonna fold over the edges, but this thing's super cheap and it's super awesome. It makes it go fast. So your fabric goes in one end like this. It helps to cut your fabric at an angle because it will just slide in easier. And then I'm using a little seam ripper to help guide it through. Comes out the other end. And when it comes out, it has everything folded for you. Look how handy that is. Then you just take your iron and you can just press it like that. There you go. Now, knit fabrics have a tendency to want to curl at the edges, so it's not going to be pressed as flat as if you were doing this with a woven fabric, but that's okay. We mostly just want to create some memory creases, that's a good term, right? <laughs> that we can use when we're sewing this in place in our next step. So I'm just going to keep pressing this. It's getting twisted back here. There we go. Okay. Oh my goodness. Guys, I told you this was so easy. I promise it is. It just got folded inside. Okay, now we're back on track. Okay, pull this down. Flip this over, and then just keep pulling it through the thing. That's long enough. We're not gonna need this entire length. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. OK, 
Okay, now that we have our bindings creased, now we can go to our machine and start sewing everything together. I'm just threading my machine with a thread color that's going to match my fabric because you will see some of the stitch line on the outside of my shirt. And then, love this feature on my baby lock. Automatic needle threader, it's so fantastic. Okay, and then we want to use a zigzag stitch. I talked about that. There are actually a ton of different stitches you could use. In fact, my machine shows all of that to me. And I've gone over that in my other video, how to sew with knits. So if you've never sewn with knits, again, check out that video first. Tons of great info in there. So to change my zigzag, which is what most machines come standard with, I'm gonna come right over here and select that. And then I'm gonna increase, increase my length just a little bit so that my zigzags are not so tight, they're just a little more spread out. So probably about a 1.8 is good. Okay, we're gonna start with our shoulder seam. We're gonna sew with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And here's a good little tip, because sometimes I have had this happen to myself, and I've heard other people say it. When you're sewing, especially with knits, it can have a tendency to get sucked down into your throat plate. Don't you love these sewing terms? So if you keep a little pin right at the end there, it can kind of help you guide that through. So I'm starting. Just like that, I'm gonna do a little back stitch. And then I'm just gonna come down. I can move that pin as I get to it. There we go, just like that. That makes it easy to get started. And then do a back stitch at the end. Cut my threads. Love it. this cutting feature on my baby lock. Also makes my life just a little bit easier. Not so many long threads everywhere. Okay, and then this one, let's see, I'll try my little trick again over here. Okay, make sure this is all flat here. And sew right down. Back stitch, cut my threads. Okay, I am not even going to press this. You could if you want to, but I'm just gonna go right to the next step. So we're gonna grab our binding here that one that we creased those little edges. And we are going to sew it around these armholes. Now this is going to feel awkward in the sense that you think I'm gonna be doing this wrong, but you're gonna take the right side of the binding to the wrong side of the fabric. I know you're like, why? Shouldn't right sides be together? But what's going to happen is that we're gonna sew it in place and then it's gonna roll around to the right side eventually and that's gonna be in place. So. We are going to, I have the strawberries going the wrong direction. I'm gonna start with a little tail and that's gonna help us in a later step. And then I'm not gonna pin it, you can if you want to. I'm gonna come back to my machine and I'm gonna sew this in place. Okay, there we go. And then as I'm sewing, I'm just gonna keep curving this around with the armhole. Again, with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then I'm, Actually stretching the binding just so slightly, not a ton. You don't wanna stretch it, stretch it, or it's gonna gather up your fabric, but especially around this curved area, I wanna stretch it a little bit so that it is kind of snug around that area. Otherwise, it can look stretched out, if that all makes sense. That was a lot of stretching. <laughs> We're stretching your knowledge here and your skills. Nice job. Okay, when I get to this shoulder seam, just make sure it's all flat there. We're just gonna sew right over that. And you can see it takes a little longer to sew this stitch, but that's just because it is doing more work. It's covering more distance, which is what allows it to stretch with the fabric. Here we are at the curve again. Just curve your fabric around. And uh, make sure it's not rolled. Okay, there we go. And I'm here at the end. Forward and back stitch. Cut my threads. And then we're gonna leave a little tail on this end too. So I cut that just like that. Then, put that aside. This is going to fold over to the other side 
and we're gonna stitch it in the other direction and stitch that whole thing in place. So when I go back to my machine, I'm gonna take that other creased edge that we had pressed with our iron, and then we're gonna take the rest of it up to that spot so that everything is enclosed and it looks awesome and we're gonna sew right on top of that. Okay, and the reason I had you leave this tail is that this is helpful getting everything through our machine. So, got that in place. And this just takes a little bit of, again, going slow. If you need to adjust your speed control, I can do that right here on my baby lock, makes it really easy. So, I'm gonna fore and back stitch. If I need to pull this through a little bit, I can do that. And then I'm just gonna stitch this in place. And then I wanna keep folding and adjusting as I'm going. And I wanna make sure that I'm sewing over that line that I sewed on the other side so that we don't see that stitch line, we just see the new stitch line. Sewing with knits is a really fun adventure and every knit fabric, every brand of knit fabric is gonna react a little differently. So it'll just take you some time to figure out, you know, what, <laughs> how it works for you and also the different weights of your fabric. You know, if you have a super lightweight knit, it might react differently than kind of a heavier knit. So, and something I forgot to mention about this particular fabric is that it is four-way stretch, meaning it stretches from left to right and it stretches the other direction too which sounds like it should be two-way knit, but they call it four-way stretch. So anyway, those fabrics are great because they are super stretchy. They usually have a little bit of spandex in them. It makes it great for clothing. So just different things that you wanna pay attention to and learn, and if you enjoy sewing clothing for yourself, then keep exploring all those different fabrics and seeing how they react. Okay, I'm at the end here. Backstitch, cut my threads. Now we're gonna do all the same stuff on the other arm. Okay, we're all done with both of the arms. Looking awesome. You guys, I love how quickly clothing comes together. Okay, we're just gonna go straight in and do the neckline right now. And I'm gonna use the remaining piece that I had from the other part. And I'm not going to sew the ends together yet. We're just going to kind of figure that out as we go because with knits, since it's stretching, it's not gonna be exact until I get more to the end. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, so same thing. We're starting on the wrong side of the fabric with the right side of our stuff, our binding, and I'm gonna leave a tail again, and I'm in the middle of the back because I think that's where I want the seam to be. And there are so many different ways to sew this. You can find your own method too. Some people like to not sew one of the shoulder seams and to sew the whole neckline together and then sew that shoulder seam and sew the binding into the seam. Anyways, have fun and you know, explore all those options. So I'm gonna come back over here to my machine. Let's pull this all in here. And, okay, let's sew this in place. Okay. And again, I'm just subtly stretching it as I go around all these curves. Okay, I'm almost back to the beginning, but I want to leave a little gap here because we're gonna finish off this seam. So I'm going to come off my machine here. And we want to match these two ends up so that our binding can be sewn at the end. So I am just going to Kind of finger press that right there. I know that's where that goes. Bring this one over to match it. Just like that, grab my pins. And then I can tell that that's where those two ends want to meet up. I'm just gonna pin down like this and know that I'm gonna sew in a straight line, well, in a zigzag line down this little area here. So bring this back over to my machine and we are going to sew this as flat as we can, which is hard. You can leave more of a tail if this part is difficult, but you don't leave too long of a tail because then it's, you know, hard to get very precise. 
with <laughs> what you're doing. And I am having a big old heavy mess under, I can't get it. Okay, there we go. And then before we start sewing anything, I'm just gonna pull this out and just make sure that it is flat. Oh, that looks perfect. So I'm gonna trim off this end here. Here's my scissors. Just cut that so that I have a small seam allowance there. Then I'm just gonna go right back into my machine and finish sewing that part. Right where we left off. Okay, and that's just a simple way to give you a more precise finish on your neckline. If you had cut it ahead of time, I just feel like it wouldn't be the exact fit and you would be frustrated and I would be frustrated and so that's just a better, better result. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing that we did on the armholes. We're gonna flip it around to the other side and sew that in place. So just like this, fold it around. Like I said, it does have a tendency to kind of roll at the edges. So just work with it. Be patient, it'll be worth it, and come right back in. When I get to the back here where we sewed that seam, it can be a little bulky, so just go slowly, maybe use your hand to pull it a little bit back here so that you don't get stuck or break your needle, anything like that. And I made it back to the beginning, do my back stitch, and let's go work on the side seams. This is how our top is looking so far, and now we're gonna work on these side seams. So fold it in half with the right sides together this time. <laughs> and match it up right at these side seams. Leave these tails on here. I know you really wanna cut them off. I feel your pain. But they're going to help us again as we're sewing to just get through the machine. So this is a time when I do like to use pins, especially if you were using a print that had a big design repeat, like stripes or something like that, that you really wanna line up well. It's important to pin that so nothing shifts. And then one last little design feature we're gonna add at the bottom here is a little slit on both sides. So I'm gonna grab my ruler and I'm gonna mark three and a half inches here from the bottom that this is going to be my stop point when I'm sewing my side seam. I like to use double pins, that just helps remind me. And every time I think, you know what, I'm not gonna worry about that, I'm gonna remember. I never remember. So do the double pins. Almost as amazing as a double rainbow. Okay. And then after we're done with pinning here, we're just gonna go back to our machine and sew those with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, just like we've been doing. We're back at our machine and I talked about these little tails here. I'm gonna show you how that helps. Just like my little pin trick, it can help to just start this off for us if we need to little extra oomph to get going. See, look at that. Then we can cut them off later. Okay, just sew all the way down. Remember to stop at the stop point, at the double pins. And here at the end, these tails can help us too to get that last little bit through there. Now, you can cut off these little tails finally, and I wanna show you one last, well, it's not really a trick, but something that will make this lay nicely when you're wearing it, is that we're gonna come back into your armhole, and we want to sew these down. Oh, actually, you should have left the tail on. It's a little easier to do with the tail, but this is gonna be fine too. So go right under your machine, and we're just gonna sew a little zigzag right on top of that. Do it on one side, and then I'm gonna do it on the other side also. 
and that will show on your fabric. I feel like it blends in well because it's under your arm. You're not gonna see it very much, but it does if I, once I cut off all these things, it just makes it so that it's a little flatter and it just lays more, more comfortably under your arm. So we'll do that on both sides. And now we just need to hem the bottom. Start by pressing this under, over, under, over. I don't know which one's technically right. A quarter of an inch, like that. And don't worry about these little slit areas yet. We are going to just sew those in place when we're on our machine, so we don't need to press those. And then, and then decide how you want the rest of your hem, how wide you want it. I like kind of a chunkier hem, so I'm gonna do mine one inch. And I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it because I just kind of can tell where an inch is. There we go, that looks pretty good. Like that. And I might actually put some pins in this to kind of help it all stay in place. When we go sew it. And then we're gonna press the other side also. Let's flip this over. Now let's go back to our machine and sew the hem in place. Make sure this little slit area is unfolded when you start sewing. Still using my zigzag stitch. Just use that throughout the whole project. And sew that thing in place. Let's sew down the other side. And you wanna make sure that you're not stretching this part as you go. This should just be straight, flat. It's a straight cut, a straight line, so we shouldn't need to stretch any of it. Now we're gonna finish off this little area that I was talking about. So, we are not gonna pin anything here. We're just going to fold it over twice, about a quarter of an inch each time, like that and like that. This is not an exact science here, but it turns out pretty cute. So do that, come back under your machine and just sew that in place. See, I just made a little seam right there. You're gonna wanna cut all these loose threads off when we're done. And then let's do the same thing on the other side of the slit. Roll and roll. And come back under our machine. And sew that one in place. There we go. And that just gives a little extra movement, I guess, and room down at your waistline area. Let's do the other side as well. It's nice sewing with knits because it's so forgiving. I mean, even if I didn't roll that hem over twice, you can just sew it in place because the fabric doesn't fray at the edges, which is a great thing about sewing with knits. We are all done, my friends. Let's see how our tank top looks. Let me show you just a little closer how that little slit looks right there. You can see how it finishes off really nicely. And you can see our hem here with the zigzag stitch. And let's just look at the final result. <laughs> there we go. That's so satisfying to sew something for yourself. And I love wearing these to the beach, to the pool, with a fun pair of shorts or a skirt. So. I am gonna love this this summer. I hope you have fun drafting your own patterns, sewing your own shirt, feeling accomplished and part of the adventure. <laughs> so, do your best. That's all you ever need to do. <laughs> if you want more ideas and tutorials, you can check out my website, 
madeeveryday.com. And for all of your sewing machine needs, go to babylock.com where it's all for the love of sewing. Okay, have a great day. Bye.